Ranges are another built-in sequence type. While tuples can hold anything, ranges have a more specific purpose. A range is a sequence of consecutive integers. Actually, ranges can represent other sequences of integers, but we're going to focus on the simplest case, where it's uh, an increasing sequence of consecutive integers. So here are all the integers in a number line centered around zero. With the expression range negative two to two, that picks out a subset of these integers, which begins with negative two and ends with one. With one, you say, I thought it said two here. Well, the lower bound negative two is inclusive while the upper bound two is exclusive. One way you can think about that is to consider these bounds to be pointers just before the number that's stated in the number line. So negative two points just before negative two and two points just before two. And then the range is everything in between those two pointers, negative two, negative one, zero and one, but not including two. So the length of a range is the ending value minus the starting value, in this case four, and element selection is the starting value plus whatever index you pass in. So because it has a length and an element selection, it is in fact a sequence. And when I create a range, I can convert it into a tuple by calling the tuple constructor, which will actually enumerate all of the elements. So range negative two to two is those four elements, like I said, and range four is zero, one, two, three. What's going on there? Well, when you only include one argument to this call to range, then it assumes that zero is the starting value and it uses whatever you pass in as the ending value. Let's start up Python again. The range is built in. And when you evaluate a range, you get back a range. So you, if you want to actually see what's in it, you have to call tuple. And if we want to go from negative two to 20, we can do that as well. And it will just count its way up. Now, an interesting thing about ranges is that they're representing these ranges of numbers very efficiently. They just remember the starting value and the ending value. And then to pick out a particular element is easy. You just add the index to the starting value. And to compute the length is also easy. You just take the difference between the ending value and the starting value. So we can observe this efficiency by noticing that that was very quick. But if we want um, big range to be equal to negative two all the way up to, let's say, 20 million. That happened instantaneously. How big is this big range? Well, it is really that big. But so far, this range value that I've created, which is of type range, hasn't actually gone through and enumerated all these numbers. It just knows what they are. It's really easy to figure out what's the 400,000th element, it just adds that number to the starting value. If on the other hand, I create a tuple out of that big range, it takes a while. And it takes a while because the tuple has to explicitly enumerate every value, which we see pouring across the screen right now. And it's still going. And we're done. So tuples have to remember every element because they're totally general. You can store anything you want. Whereas ranges have, us an have a specific structure and therefore they can be represented and manipulated efficiently. One more interesting topic about sequences is that a Python sequence abstraction has more behaviors than we've seen so far. It doesn't just have length and element selection. It also has membership. So what's membership? Well, there's an operator called in. Here we'll see its example. And in tells you whether a value appears somewhere in a sequence. So if I define digits in this way, and then I ask if two is in the digits, it will say true. And anything that's not in the digits, I can look for in this way. And then there's also something called slicing, which is an advanced version of element selection that selects 
subsequences. So digits is 1, 8, 2, 8 in this example. And if I ask for all of the elements starting at index 0 up to and not including index 2, then I'll get the element at index 0 and the element at index 1, 1, 8. So it's very similar to how we think about ranges where the starting value is inclusive and the ending value is exclusive. Now, if you leave out numbers in a slice, then they will be assumed to be the boundaries of the sequence. If I leave out the first number, then that's assumed to be zero. If I leave out the last one, that's assumed to be the length of the sequence. So if I say digits from one on, is a convenient way to say that, then I'll get eight to eight, where eight is the element at index one, and two eight is the rest of them after that. Now be careful, slicing does create new objects. So if we look at the environment diagram, for an example where we create a tuple, one, two, three, four, and then slice all but its first element, so element one on, and bind that to the name t, then s will be bound to one, two, three, four, and t will be bound to two, three, four. A new tuple created when I asked for a slice. And just like you can slice a tuple, you can slice a range, because they're both sequences in Python.